Dr. Sasa, welcome to the program. Can I start by asking you about the deadly force that the junta is using against protesters? Amnesty International is saying that its strategy has turned to shoot to kill the protesters. Do you believe that's what's happening on the ground in Myanmar? Unfortunately, I'm afraid that is true and fact. It's becoming getting worse and worse because uh, they have been uh, declaring the war against his own people. So the snipers are on the trees, snipers are on the, on the floor, on the, on the roof, and they are on everywhere. And they are just shooting. And this is just so sad to see this happen again and again. It have happened. In, uh, in 1888, it happened 97, it happened 2007, it happened uh, 2017, and now in my lifetime, 2021, we have seen this crime against humanity. Let me just read you what the UN Special Rapporteur for Myanmar has said. He is basically saying that the junta is shooting down people in cold blood using 12-gauge shotguns, 38-millimeter rifles, semi-automatic rifles against peaceful protesters who pose no threat. You've just talked about snipers in high, you know, at, at high points taking aim. What do you think the aim of the junta is now? Because up until now, they were using water cannon, they were using rubber bullets. Why do you think now, a month after the coup, they have turned to this escalation, escalation of live fire? In the way, it's not surprising. That's what exactly what happened in 1988. That's what happened in 1997. That's what happened in 2007. That's what happened in, in, uh, in uh, uh, 2017, and now it's happening again. So it's like repetition of the same crime against humanity. And I'm afraid this is what has been happening to ethnic minority states like Chin, Karin, Rakhine, Shan, Moon, Chin. This is what we have been the, the, the living on uh, for the last 50 years. Uh, they are bringing the bombs by the fighter jets. You know, it seems like they have the license to kill. They have the license to, to rape, the license to torture, and the license to crime against humanity. Um, Dr. Sasa, you mentioned all these ethnic minorities. Of course, the world knows about the uh, attacks and the brutality against the people of Rakhine State. We've seen how the Rohingya have been pushed out of Myanmar. So, so we understand that. We put that into context. And I want to ask you this, because we also spoke to the UN Special Envoy for Myanmar, as you know, Christine schreiner Burgener. She said this to us. I want to play what she told us about the protesters themselves. This is the only uh, thing they can do to resist uh, and in this uh, peaceful mean, because uh, in my view, the Tamado, the army, is just waiting that also people uh, will take arms and defend themselves. So it's very dangerous. And I beg the people in Myanmar not to fall in this trap, uh, so to stay uh, peaceful. But it's clearly very easy to say uh, from a safety zone. So, Dr. Sasa, she is begging the people of Myanmar, your people, uh, not to fall into the hunter's trap. Do you also, do you, would you reiterate that call? Do you beg the people also not to resort to violence themselves, not to get trapped by the military into doing that, and then, you know, maybe an even worse crackdown? The people of Myanmar are brave, courageous, and peaceful. You know, this is a peaceful country. Uh, we are peaceful people. Uh, no one is uh, making any violence except this illegitimate, illegal military dictatorship regime. So it's a very, very difficult for me to see our people will take uh, guns or any weapons to, 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 to against the, the, the Tamado. Uh, there never was uh, ethnic minorities or any other group of people in Myanmar who come and take weapons and against the Tamador or the military regime. It was always this uh, military regime, dictatorship that go after ethnic people, that go after marginalized people, 
and that go after the most vulnerable people. So, I mean, I don't, I don't think that my people will be, uh, you know, taking any kind of weapons against, uh, you know, any anyone. So never, there's no history in my country that the people of Myanmar against the, the, the police forces or the army forces. In some cases, we are just defending ourselves because they came to our door and they they pointed the smoky guns to us. So in that kind of situation, of course, maybe some uh, area they may try to protect themselves. Uh, but I, uh, I think that they should not be, uh, the people should not be uh, subjected to, uh, to, 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 to blame into any violence. All these violence are caused by the military junta. Nobody's blaming them. Everybody's just very concerned about them. Let me just read you something which shows their bravery, obviously, as you know. We've seen pictures of badges that a lot of the protesters are wearing. They're saying, and they put their blood type there, don't save me if it's not certain that I will recover my full health. I want to donate all my organs that are still of use with thanks. And this is Sanda Ku. And we have translated this and verified that name. It is quite extraordinary what the, what the peaceful protesters are doing. Can I ask you personally about your story? Uh, you escaped the day of the coup. I think you were with Do Aung San Suu Kyi. Uh, tell me what happened on that day and how you were able to flee to safety as you are now. I mean, I was supposed to uh, take uh, part in the, the formation of the government, and I was to take some uh, senior role in the government. Uh, but, uh, you know, we wake up in the, the morning of the 1st of February, and we saw ourselves locked down, and we saw everywhere uh, the military. It was uh, terrible, terrible, terrible. Elected officers, member of parliament, who were elected by the people of Myanmar, for the people of Myanmar. They all saw themselves being locked up by the military uh, generals. It was the, the, the very, very terrible. And I mean, it's intimidating. It was torturing on the face of democracy and the freedom that we want. And so I was asked to leave as soon as possible so that I can speak out about it. So I have to, to dress as taxi driver and with taxi driver. And then that way, it take me three nights and three days nonstop traveling from there to where I, I am and, you know, and be a little bit more safer. So it was terrible. Have you been in touch with Aung San Suu Kyi since? Uh, no, no one. It's, they all are be silenced by guns. I mean, so even her lawyers cannot see her. So... Uh, we are worried and concerned about her health. Uh, we don't know what's happening to her. And our president, Uwe Min, is being uh, detained illegally, the same with her. So there's several people, more than thousands, have been illegally detained by illegal government, illegal dictatorship. So, uh, I mean, 54 people of Myanmar are under siege by military illegitimate governments. It seems to me that they are trying to create a situation so that the people will come out with anger so that they can kill them all by automatic guns, weapons. So, I mean, they has created a situation where this will happen. So it's a very, very worrying and concerning. So, Dr. Sasa, you said you had to escape in order to be able to tell the world what's going on. You're telling us now. But you are part of a group uh, that is, you know, of, of sort of a shadow government, and you are liaising with the UN. What are you telling the UN? What do you want to tell the international community? And how, how, what, what do you think you can get them to do? First, we need the protections. The people of Burma are protectless. There's no one who will protect them. And these uh, illegal military regime has declared the war on the people of Myanmar. So no one is safe. So number one, we need safety. That means the international community have the responsibility to protect when the state fell to protect its own people. So we are asking international community to look at that. And secondly, 
we need international community to recognize and work with democratically elected member of parliament. And in coming month, coming weeks, we are going to form um, this uh, interim government. When we form interim government, there will be alternative government against this uh, illegitimate military run government. So we are asking international community to recognize the November 8, 2020 election, where the people of Myanmar have spoken loud and clear. They have chosen us to represent them. And now it's been silence. So free and democratic world cannot silence with the generous. They must stand up with us. They must uphold the will of the people of Myanmar. And they must help us to uphold the will of the people of Myanmar. People of Myanmar, my people, are not asking money. We are not asking anything. We are asking that we gain back our freedom. We want freedom. We want justice. We want democracy. We want fendere. We want peace. So if we have that, we have everything. Dr. Sasa, thank you so much for joining us and putting your case for the people of Myanmar for the world to hear. Thank you. Thank you very much, Christian.